Previously on Hunting with Tripler. A set of 1991 Upper Deck Baseball. What is happening, folks? What started out looking like it was going to be the worst garage sale Saturday I've ever had turned out to be the best. To be the best. <laughs> and I only needed one stop. You do not, trust me, want to miss this episode. I collect so many things. Would you like to share this journey with me? I will show you the prizes I got today. So come along with me, come on along with me, me join the chase. chase. Yeah. Folks, we are in the new office, but <laughs> we need a lot of work. It's getting closer and closer and closer. I just wanted to take you up here because it's a change of scenery and it needed to happen. I needed to feel like I was connected to this space. And so the first video in the office slash I don't know, my collection is taking place. And what a great episode to show it off because in today's episode, you either go pro or you go home, folks, because that is what happened today. I don't want to reveal every small detail because I want to build to the suspense. Truly, this was a frustrating Saturday. I started off getting up so early and I was on the road by 5.30. I was kind of the only one out and no one opened their garage sale early. And I went to a community sale thinking, hey, people are gonna be open by six. I'm gonna take advantage of this. I am going to take care of business. Turns out, nobody opened up till like 7.30 and I just kind of floated around this neighborhood for like, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours, just kind of wasting my time. And there were a whole bunch of resellers who were doing the exact same thing. And I finally said to myself, what am I doing? Until that kind of shimmer that little shine in the corner of a garage started to speak to me. It sort of called to me and it said, come, come Tripler, see the goods that I have for you today. And folks, it was truly a major, major haul. Check this out. Welcome back, it's Saturday. And it does look like there's going to be over 50 sales in this community sale. And typically, I like to stay away from community sales because I find that the competition that comes out for these is so frustrating and annoying that it almost isn't worth coming at all. So the yard sale treasure maps, which is usually the best for kind of identifying where you're at and where the sale is at, is not being used in this instance. However, there's a link on yard sale treasure maps to a website that offers a much more dysfunctional map and you have no idea where you're at and if you don't know the area and the streets are not square and they're you know curvy and all this it could be really difficult so what i did is i've already been around this area for about 25 30 minutes and what i've done is i've kind of mapped the lay of the land in my mind so now that i can look on this very frustrating map I can sort of see where I need to go. The only other indicator is that there's a yard sale sign on the edge of the street, but since there are truly like 50 or 60 homes on this, those do almost nothing other than to say that there's a yard sale on the street. So at least I have an idea of where I'm going and that's gonna be it today since I have my children's dentist appointment at 9 a.m. Right now it's six o'clock. I have about two and a half hours to find some sales, find some good stuff, get home in time to take the kids. We are starting our efforts here in Seal Beach, California, and let's uh, cross our fingers for the goods. We're 45 minutes from the last time I checked in and I haven't gone to a single sale. It's both frustrating and I wonder to myself, why would you ever get up that early to go to a bunch of garage sales? Well, because clearly I have anxiety when there's huge sales like this 
and I don't know how to control myself, so I think getting up really early allows me some competitive advantage. Well, not at all, because by the time it's seven o'clock, every other reseller is out, and they're driving the same streets I am, just waiting for one sale to open. So I decided to go get coffee and breakfast, and now I'm heading back because I can't help myself. 1980s electric. Oh, okay. Very cool. I used to have like three different stereo setups in my house, and I gotcha. I don't anymore. So, what were you trying to get for it? Uh, fifty dollars. Fifty. Yeah. Okay. I have a child who wakes up at about 4:30 every day, so it's just kind of the reality. Uh, you guys wouldn't have any like DVDs at all or anything like that, or vi or video morning. games, anything. Not this morning. Yeah, we should have got wind. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm I'm well, thank you. That looks pretty cool. Those TVs are great. I know. I'm about one or two stops short of getting out of this community sale because not only is it frustrating but I just can't find a darn thing that fits into the category of things that I look for at all. And there are just a million resellers. <laughs> They're everywhere. And um, I do not like to be on top of people. I hate that. And this is kind of one of those scenarios that's just so obvious what people are doing. I mean, they're like pushing people out of the way type stuff. It's, it's annoying. I'm almost done. So I did it. I did it. I bought <laughs> I bought a ridiculous amount. My entire Santa Fe is full of GoPro accessories. And these are from GoPro Hero, I believe it's like GoPro Hero 3 to GoPro Hero 6. So they're definitely older models. But I was doing some of the research while I was there. And before I even got into discussing like buying everything, she pulled out a box of like an, a dog accessory, something that would strap to a dog with a GoPro mount to it. And I was kind of like, that's super unique. And I looked that one up and they were selling between 40 to $75 new. And she wanted like five bucks a piece. And so immediately when I heard that, I was kind of saying to myself, all right, if that's gonna be the pricing on this, then I have an opportunity here. So I basically walked up to her and I said, all right, before you bring everything out, what if I just made you an offer on everything? And you know, sight on scene, just buy it all. It wasn't until I made her an offer of $600 for everything. And I thought I was probably really low. And then she just started to cry and I was like, oh, I, I think I might've insulted her. And she said, no, you don't understand. This was my uncle. I was really close to him. He passed away a year ago and he owned a GoPro store and he had, you know, endless amounts of inventory that we just couldn't get rid of. And I've had offers of $50, $100 for everything. I don't think I've gotten an offer more than $150. So I've pieced things out over the last year and sold a few items here and there, but I have been trying to get rid of all of this stuff for a long time. And this kind of now feels like uh, some finality. I'm done, day's over. One, I can't even fit anything else in this car. Folks, don't be scared to put money on the line for something like this. I assure you, when we check the profitability on this months from now, it's gonna be really obvious why this was such a great deal. This is insane. This is what I've got.
it's just a mountain of GoPro. There are items in here that just have become obsolete by virtue of them being uh, older models. But one of the beautiful things about GoPro is they haven't updated certain aspects of the mounting system, the mounting brackets. They're all the same across GoPro Hero 1 all the way to GoPro Hero 8. So what makes this such a beautiful lot is all of the mounts are still as good as they were the day they were first produced to the current models. Got a lot of work to do, but uh, I'm looking at a pile of money and I can't tell you how excited I am to get started. I really didn't have to do a whole lot of work other than finding the item on eBay and then doing a similar listing, porting over all of the useful information, making sure that the title and the model number were correct. And then I listed it right then and there. I spent probably a total of three or four hours listing every single item. I'm gonna show you what that process looks like. So in the event you get a big bulk purchase that has a whole bunch of uh, UPC codes on them, you might be able to emulate a similar process so that you can jump right into shipping orders. I mean, for me, this was about getting it listed as fast as possible and within the first day, I was selling items. Check out how I did the listing. You can see it. I'll show you on my phone. And it went super fast. So the first thing I did was scan the UPC code. And it will populate the listed items first. You'll have to go into your filter settings and click on sold comps. There were not a whole lot of sold comps for this particular item. But the item itself is a little bit rare. So I priced it accordingly at $44.95. But as we go into the actual listing information that we're going to copy over, uh, you guys will not be given the opportunity to utilize uh, similar images. You'll basically have to do your own. What I found very simple in this process was to take pictures on the eBay app itself. And that just made the process go so much faster. So you take a picture of the front and the back. I'm checking the title here. I'm going into the description. And now, since I know exactly where I put these items, I'm going to notate exactly where I need to go to find them when I make a sale. I'm also going to double check the description to make sure there wasn't anything in there that isn't accurate. And then I also want to update my quantities as well. So in this instance, I have 16. I'll just make sure that I put 16 in there. And then as far as shipping, I want to make sure that it's first class. I weigh that as well. And then list your item. All right, folks, here is all of the GoPro stuff laid out. It's more organized than it might appear. And at this point, I've pulled so many items that I do know where everything is at. And this is easy, simple. I gotta say, I have never had reselling items that are this simple. You know what's also fantastic about this process is that not a single GoPro accessory that I have listed weighs more than a pound. So that means everything can ship first class. Most of the items are averaging like three ounces, maybe. There have been some that are closer to 15 ounces, but again, not a single item has been over a pound, which means the most I would pay is 540. The least I would pay is $2.74. And when you average all of the sales orders that I've had so far, the average shipping price is about $3.55. The good news is I can take a manila envelope like this or even a smaller one, I take my item, which this is an item that just sold a few minutes ago. This is going out for about $44. Slips inside of this, close it up, weigh it, which is only gonna be maybe 2.5 ounces, get my label on it and ship it out. It is that simple. So the process has been so smooth. So for me, the simplest way to check how I'm doing on my sales report is to go to your seller dashboard, go to your orders, 
click on paid and shipped. And then from there, what I can do is I can click on last 90 days, select item title, and then type in GoPro. And that's truly the easiest way to pull all of my sales into one report. Um, first, I'll do a double check to make sure that that's everything correct. Sometimes paid and shipped will go back to awaiting shipment randomly. But here are all the sales that I've had so far. I mean, it's a lot. There's over 62 sales so far. And for two and a half weeks of this being listed, I would say that's way better than I was expecting. And since these are first class items, I haven't even opened it to global shipping, but I can click on download the report and it will give you an Excel document. So what I've done is I've hidden some of the cells, uh, people's names, addresses, things of that nature. Um, and then each item, it shows you how many I've sold, what's the unit price, and then it goes into the tax collected, the, the, uh, the net price, and then eBay fees. I then added the PayPal fees, and then I did it in average shipping price as I calculated all of them together. And that gives me my TAF, and that's total after fees. And then if you slide down and you add all of that up, I have sold $1,245-ish in overall sales. And then if I can you know, add in here, what were my cost of goods? They were $600. And then I subtract that from my total in two and a half weeks, very, very little work, I've made about $650, telling you, this is the best deal I've made in a long time. Well, folks, that was today's episode. I'm still selling GoPro items. I'm still doing extremely well getting rid of this stuff. And I haven't even opened the door to selling internationally. Since all of these items are shipping for under a pound, it really means that I probably could open the door to an international community and sell this stuff even faster. Anyway, folks, so stoked. This was a great pickup. I'm really happy. This is a bit of a bad sneak preview of what the office is going to start to look like and I probably am not going to be shooting from this angle, but I'm glad you're here anyway checking it out and I do feel more connected to this space. Anyway, thanks again guys. Hit the like button, make sure you're a subscriber, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Next time on Hunting with Triffler. But it's not done. And then he had Silent Hill.